Hey guys, it's Julian here once again with another anime review. Hold up. Is that a 2D anime girl with you on screen? She is my childhood friend, Misty, who I am engaged to. Give me a moment here. Is this based off of another anime you saw once again? Yes, I just finished Ayuri Ayoshi. Hmm, that anime does sound familiar. Didn't it have a second season? Anyway, you can't marry a 2D anime girl. You're a 3D guy. In a 3D world, she's 2D. It's not gonna work out, man. Yeah, well why don't you review both then? And yes, I can also become 2D. Watch me. There, see? Now we can be together. Since when could you transform between 3D and 2D? I'm so confused. Anyway, today let's take a look at Ayori Ayoshi and Enishi in this complete series review. So this anime has received two seasons. The first one consisted of 24 episodes, while the second season only contained 12, as well as there was a bonus Christmas OVA totaling to 37 episodes. Wow, that's amazing for a romance anime. So that story must be really great then, right? Well, the plot of the story is that when they were children, Aoi and Kaoru were promised to each other to be married to merge two large companies. Well, let's fast forward a few years, Kaoru doesn't quite stick with his family and ends up breaking his promise to Aoi, so the merger between these two families is called off. Both of these families are traditionally Japanese cultural styled families following old traditions of Japan, where Aoi was solely raised to be Karu's wife. Now, I get it, today that idea would not fly by today's standards, but I'm not going to get into that. Anyway, let's talk about Karu's present day struggles. He ended up leaving the family and becoming a college student, barely struggling to get by, barely paying his rent and all of that. But why did he leave his family? Well, Karu is an illegitimate heir to this to his old family's name. I say old because he decided to leave because the family wasn't quite fair to him. Once his father passed away, the family decided to take full responsibility for him and banish his mother. Soon after doing so, his mother passed away and they forbid Karu to go see her. Well, that didn't quite sit well with Karu, so he decided to revoke his family name and run away. Talk about an ugly backstory. Yeah, no kidding, that's one crazy heck of a backstory. And on top of that, because he revoked his family name, he was no longer the heir to the family. So let's go back to the present day where one day he, on his way home from school, bumps into a girl wearing a kimono with her shoe broken. And without even giving it a second thought, he decides to help her. Then he decides to go even further and help guide her to where she was going, only to end up at a destroyed house. Karu then brings her back to his place because of the gentleman he is and he soon realizes that this girl is Aoi from his childhood and that she is still in love with Karu after all of these years and still wants to be together. Talk about commitment and she begs and pleads for him to return to his family so that they can still be together because if he doesn't take on his family's name they can't get married because her family wants well she's from a big large corporation family. If she's gonna get married, it's gotta be a merger marriage, right? Unfortunately. But of course, Karu declines her offer to take back his old family name because she doesn't quite know what went down between him and his family. So Aoi is very persistent and decides to continue to stay beside him against her family's wishes. So, well, what, what does a family usually do for a problematic child? No, they don't take her away. They decide to put her up in a mansion and make the two landlord and tenant to kind of help smooth things out, but still make sure that nothing will happen between them. The series follows them as they pursue their relationship behind everyone's back, as well as a few gags along the way. And come on, it's an all-female household. There is bound to be trouble to pursue them, right? Well, that's a perfect segue to my favorite segment, Romance Corner, and obviously, it's a romance anime, so let's talk about the main romance of the series, Aoi and Karu. Well, while the series doesn't actually explore them openly dating, because the whole premise is they can't actually openly date, they do have a lot of great coupley moments, and they get to keep their relationship under wraps. Again, they have to keep it secret from everyone around them. 
So everyone else is openly flirting with Karu, and Aoi just can't get in on the action. And she's not even allowed to say that she likes him. Talk about a hard stay for Aoi to see all these girls cuddle up close to Karu, and she can't do it openly. Ouch. What did suck about the anime though is that it didn't fully, fully follow the manga, so we didn't actually get to see them get married at the end. While we do at the end of the first season do get to see them as a proper couple, it's again a very short stay. And while the second season continues to explore the rest of the household, and everyone in the second season kind of more openly confesses their feelings for Karu, but once again, we don't get to see the mainstay couple follow through to the end and see where their relationship fully gets explored. So I was a little disappointed with that, but ultimately, like I said, they are the greatest couple of the series. Well, it looks like this is still my segment. Let me change back. All right, I think I can do the three reasons why you should be watching this anime like this. Number one, it's a love story. For all you romance anime fans out there, this is a can't miss. Aoi and Karu have a fantastic relationship that they have to keep under wraps, so it is great to try and see them sneak around when no one's watching and be romantic with one another. It is so cute, you don't want to miss it. Number two, it's relaxing. It's not a really action-packed anime. It's a calm atmosphere with just silly gags of everyday life. It's something you can really enjoy at an end of the day after a stressful day, or you just want to throw it on with your girlfriend or wife. You will definitely enjoy watching it and seeing how the humor plays out. Number three, it's traditional, which is kind of different and unique. It, it takes a different side of anime. We get to see more of a traditional cultural side of Japan in this anime, instead of typically the normal hustle and bustle of Tokyo, which seems very westernized. We actually get to see the Eastern culture in this anime, which I think is really cool and important because Aoi really stays always in that traditional Japanese attire and in keeps with the Japanese tradition. So I definitely thought that was a pleasant and a great bonus as to why you should be watching this. While I know for sure I wasn't promised to anyone as a child and I don't have a pretty girl waiting for me or telling me that she's loved me all these years, I can only hope that one day I will find love too. And not your weird 2D love over there. Uh, that's still weird to me. Yeah, keep dreaming. I'm gonna turn back to being 2D now. I'm moving out now with my 2D girlfriend. I'll catch you later. Okay, you're gonna really have to explain to me how you can switch between those but we'll save that for another chat, all right? Anyway, I think that about wraps it up for this review, guys. Thank you again for checking us out. Please subscribe if you like my content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care now.